What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Edmonton Oilers and look at that crap we got pushed back to sixth overall but we should still be able to get immediate elite that pick we were going to go off to, after did go up to first overall now if I do acquire it I will not pick up Jack Hughes with it but Anaheim has the second overall and they might be willing to give up their pick so maybe we could even go for Anaheim's pick and they might have a bit more options when it comes to a uh, salary but they might be saying the same thing Colorado would either way we'll figure out some way to uh get something here so and uh, this should be a good draft regardless like I said us getting bumped back to six doesn't matter a huge amount you know it does kind of suck but it's it's it is what it is and we could still get another very very strong pick in this draft and that is definitely what we plan to do start off strong here all right so Let's actually check out that draft class and see what came of everything. I did get uh, this Kelly guy scouted. Right wing power forward. Our scout has him, well, not quite ranked at three. But there's plenty here that we can grab. So with our sixth overall, we could actually get Capo Caco, who I've never used. <laughs> so that might be interesting to grab. I've actually I've never used this guy. It does say he's injury prone. So hopefully doesn't really get injured but yeah we could pick him up and if we trade up for that second we could get Michael Kelly here or we can grab like Dimi Trakos, but I might go with uh, Kelly I know it's it is yet another right winger but he could play we could play him uh, left side if we really wanted to same with Capo Caco as a playmaker might be better but the thing about this guy is it doesn't say like any great offensive stats. He has a good shot, pretty decent senses. Says similar to Milan Lucic, which you don't like to see <laughs> ever. But that's all right. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure here. I do like that this guy's playmaking ability, but we're not getting a goal scorer really. Turcotte would shoot a lot, so I mean you can grab him and he'd be an outstanding goal scorer, most likely, because uh, he's graded, but doesn't have the best shot. We can also look for a defenseman, Byram or Broberg, one of those two, but for the most part, we should pick up there. All right, let's sort here. And see if there's any... Alright, yeah, there is Spencer Knight, who I would like to get. So if I could move up for, like, a late first pick as well, which I probably could with, like, a prospect plus our second, then we might want to try to grab Spencer Knight, get ourselves an elite goalie in the bank year one, which will pretty much set us on the right course for a turnaround. Four different low leads, two of them right next to each other. That might be difficult to get, but we can go off the board with these picks. If we so desire two snipers that's really good do either of them have good goal scoring probably I like that one Jaden Gannon ah unfortunately if we give up our second we won't be able to grab him unless we move up a third but we won't be able to do that Ooh. all right well we have a lot of decisions to make here yeah that guy's that J Gannon is who you want he's really solid that guy's not as important, so we could even skip him and just go straight for the two-way forward. But sometimes it's better to have more elites in the bank than not, so I'll pin them all. And for the mediums, we didn't get any, like, late scouted, which is which makes sense, especially in this first year. But yeah, we could, we could get Capo Caco, which I'm kind of leaning towards grabbing him. And then I might even grab this guy, too. He had decent, eh, no, he's competition level B. It wasn't even A+. Plus. He had 16 points in 48 games in B competition. That's, it's not incredible. I'm not going to lie. This guy had a lot more points. I kind of like him a bit better. I might grab him over Kelly, honestly. If we get go for that second pick, which we may we may end up doing this guy is technically better but for some reason I don't like his 
I don't know. It could be completely different. Like, he could... He could be really good. I mean, the difference between B and C- minus is pretty large, but so is that point differential. That's the one thing that's kind of tripping me out. So, yeah. Not too sure. We'll have to figure that out. And figure out what we uh, are looking for in the future as well. Like if we're, we may even have dry sidle as a second liner. We'll see. All right. Hosa, Franzen. Yeah, no like major, major retirements. Mostly just like the same sort of guys retiring in the first year, which makes sense. And goalies as well. Probably none. Yep, none. All right. So no real retirements in this first year. Let's see who becomes scouts. Just Matt Hendricks. And that's it. All right, so first things first, if we're going to make a trade, we're going to have to go for it. I got the draft settings turned on now. We can see potentials and overalls as we grab them. So if we do find any, if we do have to make an off-the-book pick, we'll be able to find some, and we'll see who else. All right, we got to go immediately for the Colorado pick if we're going to do this. But hold on. First, before I do that, let's see if Anaheim wants to give up their pick. They do. All right, we should go for Anaheim's because yeah it'll be a lot easier so Anaheim let's throw Pooley in there clearly that's enough value and we'd have okay they'd have too many skaters so we gotta go for a skater back someone under contract even if they're gonna expire this year doesn't matter oh that Kessler contract man all right, they don't want to give any of these guys up, but whatever. Just throw him in. And we might just have to go straight up for it, because that value is looking actually pretty even. So I guess we're just going to go straight up. We couldn't pull off a fast one with Colorado, which it's fine. It's not the biggest of deals. And as it turned out, where their second pick lined up, we'd only be able to get a top six for it anyway, which still could have been nice, but, you know, whatever. All right, let's see if this will go through straight up. It did. All right, so pull your out here. We got the second overall pick which we can grab one of those really, really good players. Adam Larson's none too happy right now, but that's fine. And I can honestly start looking around for that Spencer Knight pick. Again, the problem with this is if we go for Spencer Knight, we'll probably miss out on that sniper guy because we can't have a second if we go for another first. And I don't think I could trade for the player after the fact, but... He will probably be worth. Yeah, I'm just not really going to be able to grab him unless he drops back. So that's the decision we have to make if we want. But I think it's more important to get a goaltender right now and start training him up. Okay, yeah, he's ranked at 29. So we'd have to grab that pick and give up on the second, which would mean giving up on this sniper who. He was really good. That's the, that's the only thing. This guy is really good, but he's projected 61 overall. So he was going, you know, pick 30 in the second round. Unless he somehow drops back, but that's highly unlikely. I do really like him, but he's not the most incredible uh, low elite. So really, we should go for the elite goaltender. Will suck missing out on this guy, but I just I simply can't have that many picks. I can't get a second if I have three firsts. We are only allowed three picks total in the first two rounds. So if I do go for Spencer Knight, yep, that that'll be it. So and I, I do think un unfortunately that's the best move. That guy could only just been dropped back a few places. We could have grabbed him, but alas, not meant to be. So I guess we should immediately go for that pick. What was he? 30 no 29 right yeah so let's probably go a couple ahead just to be safe let's go for that 27 here and we'll trade up our own second which should actually have a bit more value they don't want it unfortunately oh it's only 35 never mind not as much so i thought it was gonna be like 34 or something so we trade that in we'd still have to give up the prospect which we had a couple of those who we were willing to give up in the deal with Colorado that we can't really do now. Uh, McLeod, I guess, would be the one. Unless I could just do the goalie? If I could hold on to McLeod, he might be worth a bit of something later. I don't think Rodrigue's going to be enough to tilt this. But I'll try it anyway. A second and Rodrigue for a first. Oh, it did. Okay, perfect. 
So that works. Pro prospect goalie in a second for the 27th overall. And we are set for this first round here. We can grab pretty much everything that we're looking for. Now the decision has to come whether we grab the power forward or the two-way forward. I'm honestly leaning towards the two-way forward. I'm honestly even kind of leaning towards Turcotte. Because I know he's going to take a shit ton of shots. It's hard to say. He'll take a couple more years to develop. Which is, again, not the hugest of deals. He's supposed to go fourth overall. And I had him at, like, what, mid-70s? I can't even remember what I had him at, but... He's decent, obviously. Yeah, he got 74 and 67. And we know he'll take a lot of shots. That's really not the issue. But will his, will his shot develop really well? Maybe I should go for the more suited kind of player here. Let's see. 301 shots. That doesn't say a whole lot because Turcotte was in the same area. So if he has like the same amount of shots, he has less actually. So I don't think it really takes takes in their stats. I think these are almost like fabricated. Like if you're in the like US stats especially. You have to kind of see how they'll do when they get into the league. But Dimitrakos, he could take shots too. And he is better suited. McDavid can also score goals. We've seen it happen. You have several guys who could do that. It'll be fine. Yeah, honestly, I'm kind of really liking Dimitrakos more than anyone else. C minus competition compared to B, but like like I said, the point totals is just so vastly different. Like if that was like A competition, like for the Russian, like he's got 12 points in 52 games played in A plus competition. Oops, wrong one. So they made the pick. We're on the board right now. 17 and 48. It is slightly better, but it's not, again, it's not as good of a league. So that's tripping me out. I'm not too sure about that. I'm not liking it too much. I'm really leaning towards the McTrakos here, which honestly I think is going to be the better pick. Like in the long run, I don't know. Some, some, it's just not rubbing me right with this guy. He doesn't have the good strengths listed that I'd like. Yes, it looks like his his categories will be good. But again, I just like this guy a bit better. Their physical and defenses are almost the same. Besides, this guy's better defense, less physical. I'm, I'm fine with the less physical. Yeah, honestly, I think I should go with Dimitrakos. I think he's just going to be better in the long run than the power forward will. If the power forward had a, like a goal scoring trait, I'd be way more inclined to grab him. But I think Dimitrakos is going to be the guy. Hard to say, definitely. But I'm going to go for him. Oh, I'm in the wrong screen. I'm in the. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, so they got Jack Hughes, clearly. 80 overall high elite. Let's go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. It's. It's a risk, obviously, but I don't know. Something about that Kelly guy just didn't rub me the right way. So 78 overall, medium elite. So Montreal is going to get themselves a new winger power forward. And then at six, we can probably grab Capo Caco or someone else. We'll see. Maybe Puck Olsen will drop, drop back and someone will pick out of order. That can happen in the in the top five for sure. So let's see. Three. Uh, they actually went for Turcotte. 73 overall, medium elite. Okay. So, yeah, that power forward's dropping back. I think I made the right call. He's dropping back. Now, Detroit, they're the ones who grabbed him. 79 overall. So, the overall differential wasn't even big. He wasn't even 80. And honestly, I, I didn't like the way he was producing in a much, much weaker league. I mean, it was just, it just, yeah, it just seemed weird, you know? I don't know how else to say it. Now, if they get, they might go for cock. Oh, nope, they, they went for Pukolzin. All right. So, we can definitely get Capo Caco here. I'm hoping that the injury prone is not too bad. Or, like I said, I could go for a defenseman as well. Two lefty defensemen. 
shut down, heavy slap shot, great puck mover, injury prone as well. So there's really no benefit. This guy's also, it's basically, what do we want more? Forwards or defense? Kind of both, but they're all injury prone. And I've never really seen these guys go crazy in like the standings and stuff. Where are my pins at? Do I have any defensemen pinned? I don't think I do. No, it's oh. So we would not be grabbing a defenseman in this draft. We do have, you yeah, know, we do have one. Uh, oh man, I'm torn. But we do need four. We need everything. So really, I could go heavier on defensemen in next draft if we really want to build up a potential great first line. And then have the beginnings of the second line if dry saddle eventually shifts back to second line. These guys are tempting though, I'm not gonna lie. They're both everyone but but the thing is, all of them injury prone. So mm, I guess I'll go with the forward and if they're all in, I don't know. It's so tough to choose, but what are these guys' strengths? I'm looking at their uh, locker room type categories. This guy is good because he'd mesh well in any locker room most likely, but I still am kind of leaning towards Capo Caco here, which I think I'll do. So let's do it. I know. I'm a little, oh my God, he's 78. I'm a little like uh, torn, not going to lie. I'm a bit torn because, yeah, we do need a defenseman clearly, but we are grabbing a goalie in this draft. So that is a good thing. But yeah, we are going to need some defensive prospects. We only really have one right now, which clearly isn't good enough. So there we go. We got Capo Caco, 78 overall, 278 overall guys. I might actually leave them both off contract for a year. They are a bit too low for my liking. They will be, I mean, they might be listed as, uh, we'll have to see what their roles are. I can't check right now because I don't turn that on for the drafts. Anyway, let's uh, see what's going on in the rest of the top 10 here. Uh, there's Byram, 76 overall. Uh, Broberg was 71 overall. Yeah, so no one quite NHL ready besides really Hughes and maybe that power forward. Cousins, there he is. Pick 9. Pick 10 was Kirby Doc. Yeah, the guys didn't go as high as I wanted them to. But I did. all their overalls were slightly lower, so... Sometimes when you create guys, they're listed as higher, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Like, obviously, Turcotte going at this point. He was even projected to go, like, fourth. Put Coles, well, high top six is always seen to go around this area. But, yeah, I forget what some of these guys' overalls are. Anyway, doesn't matter a whole lot. They will get picked. There's Soderstrom. Probably way, way, way later than I wanted him to, though, but, hey. Yeah, they're just not going where I thought. Oh, well. Building the draft is very hard with computer generation combining with existing players and then your own created ones. All right. Let's go up to that 27th here. See, okay, there's Boldy. Yeah, too late. Same with, same with these guys. All of them going too late. Oh, well. All right. Let's see here. What do we got? Spencer Knight. That's, I think we're just going to grab him. He's going to be great overall. His weakness is durability. I don't think so because I created him. I didn't think I made his durability low. Seems incredibly loyal and is very even keel. That sounds incredible. I'm going to grab him. Create a goaltender for the win. Spencer Knight. We got him 27th overall. Well, he's projected to go 21st. That's sort of close. And uh, obviously, he'll take a couple years to develop. 65 medium elite. But that's it. And now we have no pick in the second. So like I said, we will miss out on that sniper. What I could do, though. Oh, I can't really. Oh, you know what? Let me do Sim to next round. Because if he does drop and doesn't go in that round, 
and he might be if he's available, then I'll I'll try to tr- uh, I'll try to trade up here in the third, like right to the first pick. But he did get picked, so yeah, damn. Oh wait, no, no, this is the second round. My bad. Let's go right up to the third, because we don't have a pick here. Yeah, don't don't sim user pick. That'd be bad. All right, as I said, let's check to see if he's still. He might have dropped back. I'm not counting on it, but he might have dropped back. He did not. Okay, yeah, for sure he did not. Okay, darn. So he didn't drop back. When did? How close was it though? Like when did he get picked? Probably like right on. Yeah, he got picked right when he was supposed to be by the Minnesota Wild. Ah, oh well. That's what happens. You, you gotta you gotta make some choices here. I feel I feel like a goalie's a bit a bit more important than a low elite sniper, even though he does look very very good. And he starts off at a decent overall. He should pretty much make the NHL, but could only turn out to be a second liner. I think it's much better that we went for a, an elite goalie so early on, because sometimes it takes you a few years to find a true elite goaltender if you don't already start with like a good prospect. It can be difficult. All right, so who the heck is here? Where do our pins start? We have three left. They don't start quite yet. I, I, I might as well grab all three of these guys now. So we can take a pick here, then grab them with the next three. Yep, that'll be that'll be what we do. So is there anything out of the ordinary here? Probably not. Probably won't find much. These first, first couple of year drafts, that's why I didn't... Although we can go for this, and he might be low elite. Oh, no, he's real. Never mind. And Honk uh, is like a low top four. Low top six, so really nothing's a guarantee here. This guy can only be as high as low top six. Yeah, not looking amazing here. We could go for another goalie and hope he turns out to be elite. That's kind of a decent bet here. But I don't think we'll be finding any sort of low elite. I wish this guy wasn't real, because then he'd, <laughs> we'd have a chance. Yeah. Unfortunately, don't think we're going to find a whole lot here. I'm going way back here. Yeah, honestly, probably just gamble on a goaltender. That name, I don't know. I don't know if that name's generated or not. Either way, he can only be as high as a uh, a starter. A Nisimov could at least maybe be an elite. We might get lucky. And at least have some trade value. I don't think we will, but I'm going to take a random chance anyway. Because there's nothing else that's even close to being spectacular. Oh, okay. He's a starter. So you know what? That's decent. We got some decent value right there. He's really terrible. So he's not going to be great. That's probably just some trade value. And hold on to uh, Skinner. To maybe train him up to be a backup. This guy's definitely trade value though, I think. Alright, so next pick. We'll start on our pins here. Here at the 97, probably, like I said, just go straight for the pins. Don't need to wheel, unless there's something incredible here. This guy could be a low elite, but that's a gamble. Very big gamble, especially with that existing at a low top six. And he might be computer generated. So let's not gamble and go for the sure things. I'm not going to gamble and like trade around picks, I don't think. Could, but... Again, this first year draft isn't insanely strong. Might as well just take what the what it gives you. So let's go for Valery Zarkov here. Nothing incredible. Nothing spectacular, but a low elite to train up here. 57 overall left winger. Not bad. Not amazing. We'll see what he turns out to be. Next pick, we got the 103. Let's see where our other picks lie, actually. Because these other two guys are 170 and 171, I believe. Yep, 170 and 171. Can I blind pick here and still grab those two? I don't think so. I don't think we... Unless we do have a weird out-of-order pick, we might. I'm trying to remember back to our pick selection. 
No. We have to grab them both right here. Which is fine. Or I can still acquire another pick, because we didn't have nine. Or did we? We had three firsts, no second, a third, a four, or five. Yeah, I think we actually had max. Oh, wait, no, 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 we didn't. Because we're on the four right now. I'm doing math horribly. I could still acquire a pick. I think we had eight. Hmm. It's tempting now, but real is it? Is it? Is there anything here that could be at least increase the value of this pick? Of this four. Low top six, yeah, sure. Kinda. It increases it. A maybe starter goalie would increase it. Still not really worth it. We could also go for this guy. Who, I tried to get him scouted when I moved my scout to the Dell. Didn't quite work out. But, man, remember when Nando Eggenberger was like a first round pick? Like an NHL 17 <laughs> or 18? Can't remember which one it was. But he was like a medium top six. <laughs> Always went in the first round. Rarely panned out, though. And now look at him. Hmm. You know, I could make this pick and still acquire. But I'd have to give up a player, and we really don't even have much. Well, what, do I, what would I want? Let's see where these picks are at. Do I want to make that move? Maybe. 142. Yeah, it'll be a s 6 that I grab, most likely. Yeah. One sixty six, like something around Buffalo, maybe a little after Buffalo. Oh, that was the wrong oh my god, yeah. It always changes. Like right there we can grab. That'll be close enough to the one seventy mark. Okay, apparently they had another pick. I'm all over the place here. Did they have two picks? They must have. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh, they have three picks. How many freaking picks you got in the six? There you go. I'll take that one. We can grab the 171 with him. <laughs> Buffalo Sabres with three picks in the six. All right. Now, but what can I give up? Do I have a small enough? Yeah. Wells. Although, he might have one year left. No, he doesn't. What the hell is this guy signed for so long for? Probably just the entry level. <laughs> but he's like 21. Okay, anyway. That could get it. It did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're getting a low elite with that pick, though, buddy. So I can take a pick here. And then start with the next ones. Or even two after that. Now, now, I'm, now, I'm, now I lost track. Is it two after that, or is it just starting with this one? Or the next one? Too much wheeling and dealing here. I'm losing track of what I got. Yeah, it'll be the next two. Fifth, 159, one. 69 yeah all right so one pick here again i think i'm just gonna go randomly for that goaltender because you never know if it starts him off at franchise you'd think he'd be kind of good that could be just completely false though he could be horrible and, and shit like it really doesn't matter i only got one tick of scouting on the guy but you never know so definitely looks like a computer generated guy Definitely not going to be incredible. But if he has good potential, he at least becomes a trading asset. Oh, my goodness. Yes, indeed. Perfect. It worked. All right. So we got another medium elite goaltender. This one, not as easy to train up. So, like I said, probably a trade asset for a higher pick, which is likely what we'll do with him. Yes, sometimes it's good to have a couple of elites in the in the bag, but these guys will be easier to come by, and we need to stock up on value now and use the value now to create more in the future, I think. I think, and more usable assets, too. Because we still need a team. 
I think next year he would be a, he, he's going to be a really good asset to trade for if we want a defenseman, elite defenseman, which obviously we do. All right, so now we'll grab those two guys that we have pinned and call her a day. Come on, load up. All right, there we go. Hopkins, Alec Hopkins, center playmaker, weak on faceoff, so he'll be changed, turned into a winger, most likely. But whatever, low elite, 58, 51 overall. Again, nothing spectacular. But it's, it's a start. We have guys to start with. So here we go. Clinton Holland, right wing, two-way forward, listed as a gem. Yeah, his only weaknesses are skating, which doesn't really matter in the sim as much. So let's grab Clinton Holland. And again, 51 overall. Low elite. So there's our draft right well, pretty much. In the seventh round, we're gonna get some AHL guy. Most likely. It's very rare you get anything else. But you never know. I'll scout around. If I see low anywhere, I'm just grabbing that guy blindly. Cause that could be it. Could be something. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think we're getting lucky here. Oh, there's one. Okay, and two. Vladimir Zaitsev or Gustav Suglebov. Both can be lowly. This guy could be lower, though. I highly doubt he'd be a, re a, a low and then good maturity. Okay, okay. Don't have much scout on him. How about this guy? Shot utilization. Looks like he may be injury prone, though. Uh, can struggle with the desire to win. Good leader. Is respected in the locker room and is very loyal. Alright, I guess this one's slightly better. It's yet another two-way forward by the looks of it. But again, has the potential to be elite. Alright, let's actually, let's look a bit more and see if there's any others. Can't go too deep or else it'll be lying to us. Oh, well there's also a low seven. So these guys could both be shit. Yikes, I'll probably grab the wrong one. Oh well, it's a seventh pick. It's not like we're breaking the bank here. I'm gonna go for Sugalabov here. I I just I like everything a bit more than the other one. Yes, Zaitsev could be better, but he also may be injury prone. And I don't like that he struggles with the desire to win. That's not good come the playoffs. So let's go for uh, Suglobov here. Come on, get lucky, get lucky, get... No! Damn! Top six. Well, we went really, really far back in that. I don't know if we'll even see the other guy. Because he's in the 230s, right? Yeah, there's no way we see the other guy. Unfortunate. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about check-in for him because no one's going to take him. So he might have been an elite, but we can find out find that out next draft. Let's see. Did I take? Yep, nine, nine perfectly. I did math correctly. All right. So Dimitrakos, Kapokako, Spencer Knight, uh, Anisimov, Zharkov, Schultz, Hopkins, Holland, and Suglubov. We the only bad. Well, I think we only got one lower. No, no, no. We got the low top six at the end, but until that pick, we did pretty dang good. It was a pretty successful draft overall. And a decent starting point for us. All right. Now we go to the resign phase. And figure out what's going on. Uh, two expiring scouts. Let's see. We'll want to get rid of at least one of them. So we have some room to actually check when new guys or what we can do to improve our scouting pool. And I'll probably do a lot of hiring and firing. B minus QMJHL isn't bad. I'll fire the NHL when I get or release him. And we can re sign the other one. Because a B minus isn't bad as a secondary. We'd need a better primary, though, for sure. Six years, cool. I'll fire you at any time, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> There's literally no consequence to screwing around your scouts. Pretty much doesn't matter. All right. So we got some signings to make here. Which is good. I got my phone right next to me. Ready to do some quick maths. Chase on once to come back. Looks like he did get a bit of stat growth too. I kind of need to bring him back. We need some guys to fill in. 
We have 10 mil to work with. I can't give him too much. That's too much. I don't need it for that long either. Maybe like two years. That's it. What's the price at? Okay, man. All right, we can get him for just above two. 2.125. For a couple years, not too bad. All right, Kyra, probably keep him. He's he could he could actually grow a bit more and be like a really really respectable third or fourth liner. He's not amazing. He doesn't have great face offs either, but for now, I'll definitely hold on to him. That's actually not too bad. I'll give him a two year deal because that price is good. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Uh, Tyratty. Really not going to become anything. But we don't have much in either way. And pr I, like I said, I think I'm actually going to keep Kako and the other guy off contract for at least a year. I don't want to put him on this team. I don't want to get morale shock. <laughs> I kind of want them to grow on their own, which I'll, I'll just likely leave them off contract. And they could do that. I think I'll hold on to Ratty, even though he's trash. I'll only do one year for it. Oh, perfect. Look at him go. He wants a two-way deal. Smart man. Don't fight me on this. You will lose your trash. Uh, Reader is also bad, but... You know what? He could be a de decent depth guy down the road. Let's hold on to him for now. Heh. <laughs> well, I guess. I'll pay you because I can, but... We can't make a big, huge splash in free agency. Because I don't think there's going to be a lot of high-end free agents wanting to come to the Oilers. Because, well... The Oilers aren't great. I might. I'm gonna release some of these guys. Obviously, Malone is gone. Uh, this Magna guy. He could actually stay because he'd be he'd be solid in the AHL. Even if we only use him as depth. Two years. Yeah, fine. Two years. It's a two way deal. Yeah, it does take a roster spot up, but that's all right. All right, this guy could probably go. I could hold on to Mantha, I guess. I was using him as depth. So let's release you. Probably release you as well. I'm going to free up some space here for sure. With guys who are really nothing. Ha! <laughs> Petrovic hates life. Okay, bye. I'm not, I'm not even dealing with the red face. You very rarely get that. Not even dealing with that, though. Yeah, we're going to have a very, very sparse team. But we have to free up space pretty much now. Because we will be drafting very, very heavily. And within two years, we'll have to get a bunch of new entry levels. So, freeing up that space now. No one passed two-year deals, essentially. Um, I might hold on to this guy because he could lock down. Uh, maybe go better then. If I'm just looking for guys to lock down positional. Yeah, I'll hold on to Manta. There you go. That's fine. Just for now. We freed up enough space anyway. We'll be freeing up more next year. Gravel. I would actually like to hold on to Gravel, even though he doesn't want to come back. He's not asking for much. I'm not going to do two years, though. And I'll give him a bit more than he's worth to come mm, to come back. He should sign for that, even though it says he doesn't want a contract. He's not asking for much, so I shouldn't have to overextend too much. Do I want to get this guy, too? Probably not. I can probably just release all of them. He's not going to be anything. I'll just release him. I'll just release a few more here. Yeah, if he was younger, I would hold on to him. All right, release those dudes. 40 guys under contract now. All right, Stallars actually jumped himself up to 80. Koskinen's hating life, but I'm gonna sign Stallars here. He just wants a one year. I mean, I guess. Doesn't matter too much. I don't think he'll sign. Well, he might, because that is 15%, but <laughs> that just seems really, really low. Montoya. I mean, I can get him for the AHL once again. And he doesn't want much, so you know what? Why not? And there's our four goalies locked in. Spencer Knights. All these guys are staying off contract. 
All right, we might have actually dealt with everything right now. We'll see how much calf space we have left, but let me just advance the day here. We still need to worry about moving cap space off, off the books. We're still going to try to get Lucic to have a really good year and get stat growth. I don't know if we'll ever succeed in that. Uh, Chase on rejected. I think, oh, Gravella. Yeah, okay. Oh, Montoya. I think everyone else accepted, though. So just a few. Again, I can pay Montoya kind of whatever. Yeah, we're not even... Well, we didn't get Chase on signed. Again, I'm not getting you to anything crazy. I will get you to two years, but I might have to go a bit higher then. What was his price again? Yeah. Okay, let's go a bit higher. Let's try just 2.2 right on the dot. He might go for that. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Probably not, though. Because I'm still trying to get a bit of a discount. You can sometimes get lucky with that. But not likely. Alright, let's go 0.25. Still would like to hold on to Gravel. He could play either, either direction. Oh, good. My batteries are low. Well, we're almost done. We'll be fine. I like to live dangerously. Yeah, Chase on rejected. Gravel still rejected. Okay. So we'd actually have to give I'm just going to release Chase on then, I think. Could probably find someone better for the money, honestly. So screw him. <laughs> I mean, it'll cost a bit more, but at least frees up some space here. I can guess same with Gravel, honestly, most likely. I don't want to have to overpay for the dude. He's not going to be incredible even if we play him AHL only. But he is decent. And if we bury the contract, it'll be pretty inconsequential. Come on, man. Get on this team. Get back. There we go. Yeah, not a huge, not a huge amount by any means. And we still need guys to play. We need spot filters and everywhere. So that's a lot of what we're doing here. And I think that's it. Yep, looks like it. Oh yeah, Montoya. What do you like, huh? Take take your exact deal. Again, he'll be buried. Won't matter a huge amount. What? You're not happy. Screw you, dude. You're going to play AHL. It won't matter. <laughs> he wasn't happy with the AHL team either. Oh, fine. I'll get a new goalie. I don't need you. Seriously, I don't. Bye. All right, so we'll have to sign another goalie. Not a big deal. Skinner's looking good, though. We should need someone a bit better than him. Train him up. But, yeah, Skinner's looking like he'll become a backup. Maybe even better than that, honestly. But he might be difficult to afford if he becomes much, much better than a, around an 82. That's what I'd like to get him at. That'd be a very, very solid backup. All right. We are done. And I can just advance up to free agency here. And we'll take a quick look at it, but before we do that, we got to turn off the draft settings. Otherwise, it's cheating. That's why you need the pro scouts. I fired one. But I should still keep his scouting stuff, right? <laughs> I kept all his paperwork. I released him. All right, let's see what the free agency class looks like this year. Now, we should see a couple of the normal, yep, Mitch Marner, and Br yeah, stupid crap. Wow, they, Sharks actually let Eric Carlson go. And no teams are interested in him, and he wants no money. Jesus. If only, if only Eric Carlson would sign for that. Are you kidding me? So they let Carlson go this time, but they keep Pavelski, probably because Carlson's friggin' point totals. That's pretty, that's pretty nuts. Why would he come here, though? I'm waiting for a team to get interested in him. Guys that we could get are around here, like Nyquist, <laughs> Lee Everly, probably. Maybe Tyler Myers. Oh, my God. It is tempting. I'm not going to lie, and I'm sure I'm going to hear some people grab for that. But let's keep in mind. Let's keep in mind, would Eric Carlson come to a team like the Oilers? I'm trying to keep it semi-realistic, especially in the first couple years, like at least with what kind of team we are. We're clearly rebuilding. Would Eric Carlson come here and sign relatively long-term? 
after being in Ottawa and then having a brief tenure in San Jose where they all came up short of the ultimate goal, getting their heads taken off by St. Louis. I don't know. I don't know if that'll be a thing. Tyler Myers looks okay. Strawman is decent, but it's money. <laughs> the fact is we have the cap. But if we grab this, that really, really hamstrings our current situation. And it puts us into a box of like, we really, really have to trade Lucic. And I don't know if that'll be a huge option. I mean, damn, it's it sucks either way. But yeah, if we make a deal for Carlson. Yeah. And again, got to consider would he even be, want to come to a team like the Oilers right now after the season we just had. Highly doubtful. But we did draft really well. And we have a new GM. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see. All right, goaltender-wise, yeah, nothing incredible. But plenty of guys to pick up for that, oh, excuse me, AHL role. And for the most part, the best defenseman, obviously, Carlson. But other than that, fringe top four guys. And forward-wise, there's a lot more. But tendered, tendered, tendered. They're always tendered, and they can never be afforded, and they're just, like, ruined in this game. Pretty tough. And I can't do anything about that. I've tried in the past freeing up cap space for each of these teams to fucking do something with. And they never ever do it. It's best to just have them keep the rights and trade them. Really. That's all. That's the best thing to try to do. Which is pretty silly. The AI in this game is horrible. Dutchie wouldn't be bad, but... Anders Lee wouldn't be either. He would at least give us a more competitive second line. I am kind of digging him. And he does take a good amount of shots from what I can remember. But that's, a long, again, a long contract. But he's more of a fringe guy I think we could probably grab. I mean, he is in his prime. He is coming from the Isles. Kind of hard to say. I don't know if we, we're not really a big free agent market team. Like, I don't think we have that pull quite yet. So, free agents probably going to be difficult to come by. For a team like the Oilers right now. Got to go. Like, you get those fringe guys. Yeah, but everyone else. Have fun trying. No one's going to want to come here. Maybe we, maybe we should just keep the cap space. And uh, train up the youngsters. But anyway, let me know what you guys, uh, what your guys' thoughts are about all that. Remember to leave that like, and I will see you guys in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.